Okay. So, tadi, like I said before, in this one, five prime. Five prime is the phosphate group. Okay. The three prime is the hydroxyl. Nanti. Okay, come. Here, if you see this slide. Okay, information stored in DNA must be read in the five prime to three prime direction. So DNA is replicated in a five prime to three prime direction. So kalau you tengok sini, this is a five prime end. Nampak? Phosphate group. Okay. So this is a three prime end. Ada OH kat sini. Okay. This is a the, uh, hydroxyl end. Okay. This is the phosphate end. Selalunya bila nukleotide yang akan uh, akan apa from the template strand untuk jadi new strand dia akan tambah dekat bahagian 3 prime end. It will always add at the 3 prime end at the hydroxyl one, not at the phosphate end. Okay, jom kita tengok balik video ni so that you can understand. At a specific point in the DNA molecule yeah. called the origin of replication site. Initially, the enzyme helicase unwinds and separates the strands of the DNA molecule, which are stabilized by proteins. The enzyme okay. DNA polymerase initiates the process of replication by adding yeah. nucleotides to a pre-existing strand of DNA. Okay, nampak tak? Saya so, uh, rewind balik. Dia datang, dia join at the hydroxyl. N. So this is a 3 prime N. Okay, this is a 3 prime and this is the 5 prime N. It will keep on adding on the 3 prime N. Okay. Strand of DNA. However, okay. replication. Okay, are there any question at all regarding 5 prime, 3 prime? Faham tak? Ke nak further explanation? Okay, what you have to know ialah memang it reads in a 5 prime to a 3 prime N. Here. It reads from a 5 N to a 3 prime. Nampak ada arrow. Yang ni pun reads from a 5 prime to a 3 N. Uh, to a 3 prime N. So when it's a 5 prime, uh, how come dia tak read from a 5, eh, dia tak add the nucleus, uh, nucleotide onto a 5 prime N? Because you start off reading from the phosphate N. So you akan tambah, 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 tambah. So the new strands akan ada dekat the 3 prime end. So that's why you read it in the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction. Okay? Clear or not? Actually that is not in your syllables. You just have to know 5 prime to 3 prime. But uh, saya just nak cerita lah how do you get the 5 prime to 3 prime tu. Okay? Right. So that is for DNA replication. Okay, kita okay. stop that. Okay, kita stop dekat DNA replication last time. Today, kita akan masuk re, uh, transcription and also translation. Okay. Can somebody uh, just let me uh, just apa ni, inform the class lah. What is the difference between DNA replication and transcription? Saya tengok gambar ni. Okay. Transcription happens ataupun involves in the process during gene expression. Okay. They regulate gene expression. Kalau DNA replication is cell division. Okay. DNA replication, they produce new strand of DNA. Okay, kalau transcription, dia boleh jadi DNA to RNA. Okay, definition. Go through the definition again. DNA replication is the DNA replication, uh, is the process of making new copies of DNA. Okay, kalau transcription is the process by which DNA is copied to RNA. Okay. DNA replication is important for cell division while transcription is important for regulating gene expression which is to produce protein. 
Okay, that is the function of transcription and translation. Lastly, product dia adalah protein. Okay, kalau DNA replication, it transfers the genetic information from DNA to DNA. Or transcription is DNA to RNA. Uh, DNA replication occurs in the S phase of the cell cycle and the transcription occurs usually in the G1 or the G2. So motif dia untuk uh, DNA replication is to prepare for cell division and this one is to uh, transcription is to prepare for protein translation. Okay, these are the raw material dia. Ada A, ada G, ada T, ada C. Kalau transcription because it involves RNA, dia tak ada T. Dia ada A, U, G and C. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you something. Can a DNA replication occurs at the same time as a transcription? Boleh tak? Yes. 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 Because it can happen on the same template strand. Boleh. Cuma yang tak boleh occur simultaneously is the transcription and translation. It has to be transcripted first, baru dia translate. Okay? Kalau replication and transcription, it can occur simultaneously. Okay? Alright, so let's go into transcription. Okay, so this will cover topic, uh, subtopic 12.4, which is transcription in your matter textbook. So that is on page, okay, uh, 218. Okay, so transcription is the process by which the cell uses DNA to form RNA. Okay, DNA to form RNA, transcription. Okay. A segment of DNA serves as a template for the production of a RNA molecule. So the gene will unzip and expose the unpacked base. And nanti kita akan tengok video so that you uh, you akan uh, is easier for you to visualize. So uh, this uh, ni? template strand ni serves as a template for mRNA formation. Dia ada dua sama ada template is the template strand and also the the one yang apa ni complement dia adalah coding strand coding strand is also known as the non template strand tetapi kalau dalam mrna uh, it is also uh, macam mana you is important to know that walaupun dia kata kalau kalau soalan kata coding strand dna translated into mrna it doesn't mean that uh, a coding strand can't be a template strand for a DNA untuk nak form RNA. Okay, dua strand DNA is a double helix kan? Any of the strand can be a template strand for a RNA. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter kalau DNA uh, daripada replication kan? DNA strand and also the coding strand. Tiba-tiba uh, bila dia nak uh, translate, uh, dia nak transcript, the coding strand daripada DNA yang tadi itu boleh juga jadi a template for the RNA. Okay? So don't get confused on that. So uh, loose RNA nucleotide binds to expose DNA bases using the CG and AU rule. Because this is RNA, so U akan jadi, uh, T dah tukar jadi U, uracil. Okay, C will pair up with G and A will pair up with U. Okay, so when the entire gene is transcribed into mRNA, the result is a pre-mRNA transcript. So after it is transcribed, dia akan jadi pre-mRNA, belum lagi mature mRNA. Okay, untuk dia nak jadi mature, it has to be, uh, akan ada satu proses dia akan go through untuk jadi mature RNA, uh, mRNA. So the base sequence in the pre-mRNA is complementary to the base sequence in the DNA. Okay, complementary, anti-parallel juga. On top of the complementary. So it involves three steps process. The first step is initiation. Second step is elongation. And the last one is termination. So 
the genetic information in a gene describes the amino acid sequence of a protein. Okay, daripada DNA tu, dia nak jadi RNA and then lastly, dia akan jadi the amino acid language. Okay, the information is in the base sequence of the one side of the DNA molecule. But remember, any of the strand can be a template strand. So the segment of DNA corresponding to a gene is unzipped to expose the basis of the sense strand. So the genetic information in the gene is transcribed into the mRNA molecule. So DNA into mRNA molecule. The exposed base in the DNA determine the sequence in which the RNA bases will be connected together. So they akan complement according to the codon bases on the DNA. RNA polymerase, bukan DNA polymerase anymore, okay? Dalam DNA replication is DNA polymerase. Dalam transcription is RNA polymerase, okay? RNA polymerase connects the loose RNA nucleotides together. The completed transcript contains the information from the gene but in a mirror image or a complementary form, okay? So, kita start off dengan initiation. Initiation. What happened during initiation? So, RNA polymerase attached to a region of the DNA called the promoter. So, this is the promoter. This is the mRNA. Okay, ni mRNA. They can bind to a single strand of DNA. They tak bind ke dua-dua. They bind ke satu side, one strand. Okay, and they can add on the uh, dia punya apa ni codon basis on the 3 prime n here this is a 3 prime n this is the 5 prime n the complementary dengan the dna okay if you see this strand of the dna it is 5 prime to 3 prime so mrna dia terbalik kan dia anti parallel so 5 prime is down here and 3 prime is here so the apa ni Codon akan add on the 3 prime end. Okay. So RNA polymerase, dia akan attach to a region called the promoter. Promoter ni dia sangat-sangat penting sebab it, it defines the start of the transcription. Also the direction of the transcription and the strand to be trans, uh, trans, uh, transcribed. The strand to be transcribed, maksudnya dia akan kata kalau promoter dekat sini, dia akan start transcribing from here. Kalau promoter dekat sini, dia akan start to transcribe from here. Okay? So once the transcription bubble has formed, the polymerase can start to transcribe. So this is what happened in initiation. So next, after initiation is elongation. Hmm, internet saya KO. Kejap ya. Sekejap, saya share lagi sekali. Okay, tadi was initiation. Dengar tak sampai habis tadi? Ha. Dengar, okay? Uh, uh, Alright. Tersekat-sekat. Tersekat-sekat juga. Alamak. Okay, promoter dia sangat-sangat penting. Why? Because it defines the start of the transcription. And it also defines the direction of the transcription. Last kali, the strand to be transcri transcribed. Lah, kenapa saya pilih ni stuck? Okay, here. Katakanlah promoter ni ada dekat kawasan sini. So, dia akan start to transcribe from here only. Okay, so that's what it means by a promoter defines the strand to be transcribed. Kalau promoter ada dekat sini, dia akan start to transcribe from here. Okay, so that is what it meant by it promotes the start of the transcription, the direction of the transcription and also the strand to be transcribed. So once the transcription bubble has formed, the polymerase can start to transcribe. So lepas initiation, we have the elongation. Okay, the elongation is when the RNA polymerase starts to rip down the DNA template in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction sebab dia anti parallel so dia 3 kepada 5 okay so dia akan add always add on to the 3 prime end 
For each nucleotide in the template, RNA polymerase adds a matching or the complementary RNA to the three prime N of the new RNA strand. Okay, so the RNA strand A have the base U is in place of the T. So, but you have to remember RNA tak the T. We are the U, uracil. So if you get confused, so this is the strand katakanlah lima strand for DNA, F5 prime N for DNA, and the three prime N. Dia akan jadi anti parallel, so five prime and the three prime n. Tapi because this is not replication, so you don't need the Okazaki fragment. Dia bukan jadi macam Okazaki fragment. This is RNA. Okay, sebab dia ada tiga triplet. Okay, the synthesize tiga tiga tiga. Okay, in triplets. Okay, so this is elongation, and lastly is the termination. Termination, the RNA polymerase comes to a DNA stop sequence and stop transcribing the DNA. So, dia akan jumpa the tiga stop codon tu, which is uwa, uwak and uga. Uwa, Yeah, betul. Uwa, uwak, uga. So, bila dia dah stop, it release the mRNA molecule. Jadi, pre-mRNA strand. Okay, so dalam your lecture note, kalau you dah download from Putra Blast before, ada ada gambar kecil kat sini yang tulis tRNA. Okay, please cancel that. Yang tu bukan dalam transcription. It should be in translation. Okay, tRNA tak ada dalam transcription. Ada dalam translation. Right. So, let's go through again before we watch the video. So, transcription ada tiga that you have to know. Initiation elongation and the termination step. So mula-mula dalam termination is the binding of the RNA polymerase to the promoter. So bila dia dah bind, the uh, DNA ni akan terbuka jadi dua. Jadi macam ni. Dia akan terbuka. So bila dia dah terbuka, dia akan bind to the specific uh, codon. Okay, that is at the promoter region juga. So at the promoter region, uh, lastly dia akan synthesize, dia akan add on the nucleotide dekat the 3 prime N. So this is the mRNA. So black is the DNA. Okay. Kalau you tengok bawah balik temperate strand, this is the 5 prime N. So mRNA mesti dia terbalik. So 5 kat sini and dia akan add on at the 3 prime N. Okay. So bila dah habis, dia dah jumpa termination ni, the codon yang uak uak uga dia akan release the mRNA strand. So RNA, RNA polymerase ni akan go and find another M, uh, DNA. Dia boleh guna again. Use it all, all over uh, uh, over and over again. Dia boleh guna RNA polymerase ni. Okay. So mRNA strand ni akan release. Dia akan keluar daripada nucleus. So transcription happens in the nucleus. Okay. Translation happens in the cytoplasm. Transcription, nucleus, okay, mRNA ni dia akan keluar dari nucleus ke dalam cytoplasm for translation. Okay, let's watch the video. During transcription, the DNA in the gene is used as a template to make a messenger RNA strand with the help of the enzyme RNA polymerase. This process occurs in three stages. Initiation, elongation, and termination. During initiation, the promoter region of the gene functions as a recognition site for RNA polymerase to bind. This is where the majority of gene expression is controlled by either permitting or blocking access to this site by the RNA polymerase. Binding causes the DNA double helix to unwind and open. Then during elongation, the RNA polymerase slides along the template DNA strand. As the complementary bases pair up, the RNA polymerase links nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing RNA molecule. Once the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator portion of the gene, the messenger RNA transcript is complete, and the RNA polymerase, the DNA strand, and the messenger RNA transcript dissociate from each other. Okay. So, selepas dia dah keluar, keluar daripada 
nucleus kan tadi. Okay. Actually sebelum dia keluar dari nucleus, dia ada satu proses lagi that uh, the mRNA has to undergo. Sebab sekarang it is called the free mRNA. It is not the mature mRNA yet. So lepas dia dah habis transcript or transcribe, dia akan modify before leaving the eukaryotic nucleus. So what happened during the processing? It is an event called the splicing. Okay, the free mRNA splicing. Okay, so mula-mula dia akan tambah dulu the cap here on the 5 prime end. So this is the cap. Cap ni actually guanin. Dia akan tambah guanin dekat sini. Kenapa dia kena tambah cap? Because yang this cap helps the ribosome determine where to attach masa translation nanti. So dia mesti ada 5 prime cap. Lepas tu ada cap dekat kepala, dia mesti ada tail. So the tail is the poly A tail. Poly A tail is at the 3 prime end. Poly A tail ni uh, dia panggil poly A. A stands for adenine. Di sini guanin, sini adenine. Okay, the adenine ni dia akan tambah dalam 150 ke 200 adenine dulu at the 3 prime end. So, this facilitates the transport of mRNA out of the nucleus. Okay, poly A tail ni juga, dia inhibit or it can delay the degradation of mRNA by hydrolytic enzyme. So, there are two uh, function. Satu, dia akan transport the uh, mRNA out, dia can facilitate. Lagi panjang dia, lagi cepat dia keluar dari nucleus. So, lagi satu is the inhibit or delay the degradation of mRNA. Okay. So, the pre-mRNA ni, dia compose of exon and also intron. Yeah. Okay. Exon and intron. Okay. Kalau you tengok exon on page mm, 220. Okay. Exons are protein coding sequences. While introns, Dia tak ada apa, dia, tak, dia bukan non-protein uh, coding sequence. Dia tak ada code langsung. Tapi dia still ada function juga. So kalau you nak senang ingat the coding region untuk nak uh, jadi protein nanti, nak uh, apa ni, nak masuk untuk translation. E exon stands for express. E ex, exon express. Okay, that's why we need it. Kalau intron, you tengok in ni kan, in, in the way. Maksudnya dia kacau je. Okay, uh, dia, so we don't need the intron. We just need the exon. Because dia ada coding region. Intron tak ada coding region. Dia ada non-coding region. So, uh, apa ni, um, allows a cell to pick and choose which exon to go in a particular mRNA. Okay. Contohnya, exon ni, katakanlah uh, because of uh, gene expression ni, dia uh, banyak faktor yang akan involve, especially environmental factors as well for it to, for the protein to be expressed. So katakanlah dalam free mRNA, you ada tiga exon. Tapi the cell doesn't need sampai tiga ada exon tu. Tiga of the coding region, dia need dua saja. So it's okay, dia boleh splice all the three up including the exon. So tinggal dua exon pun tak apa as long as dia boleh carry out the certain protein function. Okay, so that's what it means by it allows a cell to pick and choose which exon to go into a particular mRNA. Okay, so the important event here is the splicing, pre-mRNA splicing. So this primary transcript consists of some segments that will not be expressed, which is intron tadi tu and segments that will be expressed, exon. So this is why introns will then be spliced or be removed. We don't need the introns because it will not be expressed. Okay, macam mana dia splice? So in higher eukaryotes, removal is done by spliceosome. Ni, spliceosome. Okay, spliceosome ni, dia guna an enzyme called the ribozyme to cut and remove the intron. So, bila dia dah cut the intron, 
the remaining exoni boleh splice back together. Okay. So, bila dia dah splice back together, dia dah keluarkan the intron, dia boleh jadi the mature mRNA transcript yang ada a 5 prime cap at the mRNA and under the poly A tail on the 3 prime end. Okay, before the uh, go up, uh, leave the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. Okay, that is in higher eukaryotes. Kalau dalam prokaryot, introns are removed by self splicing. They can self splice themselves. So that is the intron itself has the capability of enzymatically splicing itself out of the pre mRNA. Untuk kalau prokaryot, kalau eukaryot kita ada we, we need the help of the spliceosome which has the enzyme ribozyme okay to cut and remove the intron so now we have the mature mrna to be translated okay function of intron yang intron yang kita splice out tadi dia bukannya useless terus dia still ada some function so functions of it are uh, dia permit exon punya combination which is yang saya, yang saya sebut tadi can be dua can be tiga according to uh, the cell needs so this allows the different mRNAs to result from one segment of DNA another one is intron might regulate the gene expression as well okay ni kalau you baca it is under the microRNA uh, the dalam on page 220 some introns give rise to microRNAs, which are small molecules involved in regulating the translation of mRNA. So microRNAs ni sometimes dia boleh also jadi complementary base pairing to the mRNA. So they stop, they boleh stop translation from happening. So that's what it meant by it might regulate gene expression. So another one, introns may encourage crossing over during meiosis. So this permits exon shuffling and this plays a role in the evolution of new genes. Okay, that is the function of introns. Okay, so next we are, kita dah done with the transcription. We are, next, uh, we are going next to the translation. So part of the gene sequence are the dual, transcription and translation. Yang tadi tu, it involves the mRNA. That is still a nucleotide. We call that as the nucleotide language. So now is the translation. They can translate the refer the nucleotide language into the amino acid language. Okay, so this is why it is called translation from mRNA into protein. Okay, which consists of polypeptides or amino acids. Okay, so translation is the process by which the mRNA transcript is read by a ribosome and converted into the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide. Okay, The sequence of codons in an mRNA at a ribosome directs the sequence of amino acid in a polypeptide. So, dia berkait rapat, dia called the pairing. So, the sequence of codon in the mRNA so direct the sequence of amino acid in the polypeptide. So, a nucleic acid sequence is translated into a protein sequence from nucleic and nucleic acid into the protein. So translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Jangan nanti dalam exam kata translation occurs in the nucleus. Only transcription occurs in the nucleus. Transcription and also replication. Then replication. Translation occurs in the cytoplasm, the ribosome. Okay? So this involve three steps as well. Translation sama juga dia ada initiation, dia ada elongation and ada termination. Okay, so firstly before we go on into translation too, we understand the role of transfer RNA. Okay, so if you see dekat sini, tRNA ni actually one single stranded nucleic acid. Tapi dia double back itself up jadi Complete, uh, dia jadi jadi macam well, I don't know what's this shape. Uh, nak kata across, is it? Yeah, because uh, dia akan complementary ba uh, base balik dengan hydrogen bonded to each other. So daripada sini dia akan hydrogen bonded to each other. Okay, that's why dia jadi shape dia macam ni. Actually, this is not the real shape. The real shape is this. This is the real shape. 
this is the amino acid N. This is the anticodon N. So the anticodon dekat sini ialah dekat sini. This is the anticodon. The amino acid N is here dekat sini. Okay. So the tRNA synthesize, uh, synthesize and attach the correct amino acid to the correct tRNA molecule. So dekat sini is the amino acid bind at the 3 prime end juga. 3 prime end of the tRNA. So down here, yang akan attach dengan mRNA is the anticodon. I will call it anticodon. Dia ada dua masalah sebut anticodon boleh, anticodon pun boleh. So anticodon is a group of three bases that is complementary and anti-parallel to a specific mRNA codon. So juga kita tengok yang dekat sini. If you refer back to page uh, 218, you can see that they asked about 61 codons. 61 codons that specify amino acid. Tapi ada tiga lagi that serve as a stop sequence. Dia tak specify the uh, dia tak uh, carry out a certain punya function. Dia cuma stop, uh, dia, dia serve as a stop sequence. Which is ua, 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 ua and uga. Okay, kalau you tengok yang lain, the 61 codon tu, dia mesti ada link to then amino acid. Codon tu contohnya U, 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 dia jadi phenylalanine. Ataupun C, U, U, leucine. Okay, dia ada link with a specified amino acid. Cuma, Ua, uag and uga is translated into a stop codon. Dia akan terus stop. So, so approximately 40 different tRNAs molecules are found in the in most cell. So, there are 40 tRNA. Tapi codon ada 61 atau actually 64 semuanya. So, because a fewer tRNA than codons because some of the tRNAs ni can pair with more than one codon. Okay, so this is known as the wobble hypothesis. This wobble hypothesis states that the first two position in the tRNA anticodon pair obey the AUGC configuration which is the Chagas rule. Tapi the third configuration can be variable. Okay, kita tengok balik on page 218. Contohnya, CUU, kalau you tengok situ. So, the first apa ni? Um, the first uh, position is C. The second position is U. And the third position is U. Dia akan translate jadi leucine. Okay, kalau bawah dia you tengok, CUC. CUC can still translate into a leucine as well. Why? Because the first two position dia obey the Wobble hypothesis. Okay, dia still boleh translate into a leucine. Walaupun the third one is not. The third one is C. While the first one is U. Okay. Faham tak? Okay, that is the wobble hypothesis. Walaupun there is a difference in the third position ni. Dia still boleh code for the same amino acid. Okay, so that is wobble hypothesis. So, kalau you tengok dekat sini, mRNA dia, codon dia is a CUU. So, bila CUU, the anti-codon read as a GAA. So, bila anti-codon read, uh, the CUU, CUU stands for leucine. Kalau you tengok balik dalam table tu. So, this is the amino acid leucine. Dekat the amino acid N. The three prime N. Okay, so that means this tRNA carries amino acid leucine. Kata kalau kalau kat sini C U C, amino acid here will also be a leucine as well. Regardless, dia punya ni U ataupun C. Sebab dia tengok the first two position. Okay, so next that was tRNA. Now is rRNA, ribosomal RNA. So ribosomal RNA ni kalau you tengok dia punya gambar, dia terdiri daripada dua unit. Satu is the atas ni ialah large subunit and the bottom one here is the small subunit. Okay, so ribosomes plays a significant role in protein synthesis. Okay, it has one binding site for mRNA which is down here. 
and ada three binding site for tRNA which is E, P and A. E stands for exit, P stands for peptide and A for amino acid. Okay, these are the tRNA binding site. Yang bawah ni satu dekat small ribosoma unit ni is the mRNA binding site. Okay. So this large ni, large ribosoma subunit ni ada enzyme activity that creates a peptide bond between the amino acid. Okay. Okay. So this is translation. So this is the structure of the ribosome. They are the large unit and the small subunit. Okay. Dalam the large subunit ada tiga site which is exit, peptide and amino acid. So these are the tRNA binding site. So dekat the bottom one, the small subunit is the mRNA. mRNA bind dekat the small subunit. Okay. So this is the function of ribosome. So mRNA are combined to the small subunit. Okay, so these are the polypeptide. Polypeptide ni dia akan always ada readily dekat bahagian P. P side. Okay, so the incoming tRNA will always go at the A side. Okay, so bila dia dah masuk dalam side ni, A, uh, the, the, the new one yang masuk. So the new one here dekat A, yang lama dekat P. So the P dia akan pass the polypeptide yang dah panjang ni over to the A side. Dia pass the ribosome. Dia pass the polypeptide, sorry. Pass the polypeptide. Ni, from here, dia pass to here. Lama-lama jadi makin panjang, makin panjang. So, bila dia dah pass, dia akan keluar through the E. Okay, dia langkah keluar ke E and then dia keluar. So, A pula masuk. A new one masuk. So untuk for in order for the new one untuk masuk sini, the one at the P mesti ganjak. Okay, dia akan ganjak, ganjak, ganjak. So from A to P, P to E. Okay, so dia akan bagi space for the new one untuk masukkan A. A akan ganjak ke P and then P ganjak ke E, they exit. Okay, so if P side, they always bagi the polypeptide to the A. Okay, nanti akan ada video, don't worry. Okay, so this is the overview of the translation process. Okay, they always start at the start codon, kalau mRNA, AUG, out. Okay, and the anti-codon is the UAC. They are the AUG for the start codon on the mRNA, and the anti-codon is the UAC, carrying AA1. Okay, selalunya metionin lah. A, uh, kalau apa ni? The anti apa? The TNA, the first one usually the methionine because it, uh, AUG. Kalau you tengok dalam the the table tadi, AUG start uh, akan translate into amino acid methionine. Okay, so this is usually methionine. So the first one during initiation, the components of the translational apparatus come together with an mRNA and a tRNA carrying the first amino acid. Sini. Yeah, this is initiation. I can bind to the start codon AUG. Out. Okay, next one, e elongation. So during elongation, amino acids are brought to the mRNA by tRNA. They akan masuk kepada the A side. One by one and add to the growing polypeptide chain. So add to the P side, peptide side, and then they can leave dekat the E side. Okay, so that is elongation. Lastly is the termination. So during termination, kalau tiba-tiba dia tiba-tiba realize there's a, a, apa ni? a stop codon, uak-uak uga. So akan ada one uh, protein release factor yang akan block the, the new tRNA from coming in. So, dia akan release the polypeptide chain. Bila dia dah release, this ribosomal subunit akan deteriorate. Dia akan dissociate. Okay. So, let's see the video. Okay. Oh, lovely. Nampak? Okay. 
चलिए The genetic information stored in DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA and then translated into protein. Messenger RNA binds to the small ribosomal subunit and then the large subunit associates with the small one. The initial transfer RNA occupies the P site on the ribosome. Subsequent transfer RNAs enter at the A site. The complementary matching of three nucleotides on the transfer RNA called the anticodon, and three nucleotides on the messenger RNA, called the codon, ensures the correct sequence of amino acids. The messenger RNA passes along the ribosome in short spurts of three nucleotides at a time. As this occurs, the initial transfer RNA is moved to the E site, and its amino acid is transferred to the second amino acid at the P site. At the same time, a new codon is presented at the A site. The initiating transfer RNA, which no longer carries an amino acid, leaves the ribosome and the next transfer RNA, with a complementary anticodon, enters the A site. Each time a new codon sequence on the messenger RNA moves into the A site, a new transfer RNA amino acid can bind. The old transfer RNA paired with the previous codon is passed to the P site. The amino acid it carried is transferred to the growing amino acid chain. As the ribosome moves down the messenger RNA, a stop codon is met. A protein release factor binds to the stop codon and cleaves the polypeptide from the transfer RNA. The ribosomal complex falls apart. Okay, so that is how translation works. Okay, jom kita repeat balik on initiation. Okay, tadi mula-mula initiation and then elongation and also termination. So when we repeat ni, maksudnya this topic is very, very important for your exam. Okay, so the first one is initiation. So component dia are all of these. These are all the necessary components for initiation. So initiated tRNA always has the UAC anticodon. Okay, UAC. Sebab start dia adalah AUG. AUG dia akan, uh, anticodon, uh, anticodon dia adalah UAC. And they will always carry the first amino acid is methionine. Okay. Dia akan mula-mula bind to the P site. Okay. So this is the beginning of the transcript. Which always start at the start codon. AUG. Macam ni dia punya, dia punya layout dia. Okay. Start codon, AUG, UAC anticodon, methionine in the P site. Okay, this is initiation. So A site ni kosong, so they are ready for the next tRNA. Okay, so elongation. Elongation refers to the growth in length of the polypeptide. So the RNA molecules bring the amino acid pairs to the ribosome. Ribosome reads the codon in the mRNA. So allows one type of tRNA to bring its amino acid. Okay. So bila ada codon, they must have the anticodon, which is complementary to the mRNA codon being read. So the incoming tRNA join the ribosome at the A site. Okay, at the amino acid site. And then the methionine of the initiated tRNA is connected to the amino acid of the second tRNA by a peptide bond. So antara the amino acid tu is connected by a peptide bond. Okay, that is elongation. So tRNA with an attached peptide is already at the P site. Okay, so bila dah ada dah dekat sini, so the new tRNA will carry a specific amino acid arriving at the A site. Dekat sini. So, bila dia dah masuk dekat sini, the ribosome verified the incoming tRNA and placed it at the A site. Sorry. 
So what happened next is the passing. So the growing peptide will be transferred to the amino acid on the tRNA in the A side. Okay, so here. Dia dah masuk kepada A side. A side ni, dia, the growing polypop, uh, polypeptide chain ni, dia akan transfer to the new one. So, dia akan jadi the growing polypeptide. Makin lama, makin panjang. Okay. So, bila dia dah pass, what happen to this one? This one, dia akan go at the E side. Dia akan move forward. So peptide bond binds the peptide together and translocation occurs when the ribosome ni ke depan. So bila dia ke depan, this one akan jadi dekat E, E side. So bila dia ke depan, so the, dia akan terkeluar bila the ribosome dah move forward lagi. So bila dia move forward yang tadi dekat A akan masuk kepada P side. Okay, leaving there's a space for the new tRNA to masuk dekat bahagian the A side. Okay, so the span tRNA at the E side exit the ribosome. So now the peptide bearing tRNA is now at the P side. Yang tadi dekat A yang ni, dia dah jadi dekat P. Leaving a space for the new tRNA to bind to the A side. And the process is repeated. That's why it's called elongation. Okay, so next, this is elongation. So after elongation is termination. Okay, so what happened during termination? Termination is when the previous tRNA move to the P side. Okay, daripada yang tadi dia dah pass, dia, uh, apa ni? Dia dah pass uh, from P, dia akan move to the E side. So, bila dia dah move to the E side, it will exit. Okay, so ribosome reads the stop codon at the end of the mRNA. So, bila tiba-tiba dia jumpa uak, uak, or uga, yeah, this uak, uak, uga, dia does not code for the amino acid. So, there's a protein called a release factor, brownin. Ni, this is the release factor. Bila dia nampak the stop codon, dia akan bind dekat A side ni to stop the codon and cleave the polypeptide from the last tRNA. Maksudnya, lepas tu dia akan stop from uh, other incoming tRNA, dia akan potong the last tRNA ni dengan the last growing polypeptide. So, bila dia dah potong, this releases the mRNA. And then, bila dia release this polypeptide, this subunit here, which is the large and the small, akan dissociate. Dia akan cari another, another mRNA. Ataupun, uh, this mRNA akan cari another ribosome for it to be red. Okay, so that's how the cycle goes. This is termination. Termination, when it comes to translation, you always have to remember it will encounter a stop codon, the release factor, and then the releasing of the growing polypeptide chain. Okay, so that is termination. So let's watch this video. How is the information in the mature messenger RNA strand translated into a protein? The nitrogenous bases are grouped into three letter codes called codons. The genetic code includes 64 codons. Most codons code for specific amino acids. There are four special codons, one that codes for start and three that code for stop. Translation begins with the messenger RNA strand binding to the small ribosomal subunit upstream of the start codon. Each amino acid is brought to the ribosome by a specific transfer RNA molecule. The type of amino acid is determined by the anticodon sequence of the transfer RNA. Complementary base pairing occurs between the codon of the messenger RNA and the anticodon of the transfer RNA. After the initiator transfer RNA molecule binds to the start codon, the large ribosomal subunit binds to form the translation complex and initiation is complete. In the large ribosomal subunit, there are three distinct regions called the E, P, and A sites. During elongation, 
individual amino acids are brought to the messenger RNA strand by a transfer RNA molecule through complementary base pairing of the codons and anticodons. Each anticodon of a transfer RNA molecule corresponds to a particular amino acid. A charged transfer RNA molecule binds to the A site and a peptide bond forms between its amino acid and the one attached to the transfer RNA molecule at the P site. The complex slides down one codon to the right where the now uncharged transfer RNA molecule exits from the E site and the A site is open to accept the next transfer RNA molecule. Elongation will continue until a stop codon is reached. A release factor binds to the A site at a stop codon, and the polypeptide is released from the transfer RNA in the P site. The entire complex dissociates and can reassemble to begin the process again at initiation. So, that was translation. So, what you have to remember here is transcription happens in the nucleus. This is the nucleus. So, before it can leave the nucleus, it has the pre mRNA from transcription has to be processed uh, by the enzymes, uh, by spliceotome using the enzyme ribozymes. So, below they are processed, they are buang or the introns. Remember, E for express, and intron is in the way. Okay, in the way, maksudnya dia tak ada expression. Dia yang express only the exon. So, dia akan jadi, uh, after the splicing, dia akan jadi the mature mRNA. mRNA will leave the nucleus. Dia akan uh, move out into the cytoplasm. So, when they move out to the cytoplasm, dia akan associate dengan ribosome. So ribosome, what you have to remember is they are the large and other small subunit. Okay. So and then the starts the translation. So tRNA with anticodons carry the amino acid to the mRNA. So from here, they are combined at the P site. Okay, P site. Sini. So during initiation, the anticodon and the codon complementary base pairing begins as the ribosomal subunit come together at the start codon. Start codon, you have to remember, is AUG. Okay, AUG is the start codon, and atas dia, the peptide must be, amino acid must be methionine. Okay, so after that is the elongation. So during elongation, polypeptide synthesis takes place one amino acid at a time. Okay. After, uh, during elongation to juga, the ribosome can attach to the rough ER, endoplasmic reticulum. So, they can continue, continue until they can jumpa the stop codon. Bila the stop codon, there's a release factor at the A side. So, now they can release the growing polypeptide. They can stop. And then the ribosomal unit can dissociate. Uh, can be spent. So releasing the growing polypeptide into the ER. Okay, so this is the overall process of transcription and translation. Okay, please read through again. So lastly, bila dia dah masuk tadi protein dah masuk ke dalam ER ni, what happened? So that is the final part of the gene, gene expression. Is a gene has been expressed when its product or protein is made and is operating in the cell. Okay, so for protein, gene expression requires transcription and translation. Requires that the protein also yang release dalam ER2 be active. So the first few amino acids of a polypeptide act as a signal peptide with information about where the polypeptide belongs. Okay, ini dia punya start with the protein function. So, polypeptides can either belong in the cell ataupun dia akan secreted out from the cell. So, some polypeptides are processed further, mungkin by the addition of sugars, phosphate or lipid dekat dalam the rough ER. 
So when they have been processed, the transport vesicles carry the protein between the organelles and to the plasma membrane and other region. Okay, so that is gene expression. Tapi yang ni baru the beginning of gene expression. Don't worry, next um, probably on Friday ataupun next week, we will go on into gene expression, the regulation of the gene expression. Apa yang turn dia on, apa yang turn it off. Okay. So that is all for our lecture on translation and transcription.